welcome back to Shifting Schools podcast. I am here with my friend and colleague, Jeff. Um, we wanted to do another off the cuff. We've been doing so much geeking out around uh, generative AI tools that we thought it was really important to document some of the stories as we're experiencing them and, and talk to listeners a little bit about just some of the big umbrella questions I think that we have emerging as Jeff and I continue to do this work. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing great, Trisha. It's so good to be back. I like it when we both get to be on the mic together and we just click the record button. That's what makes these off the cuff so much fun. A hundred percent. You know, again, anybody who's interested in podcasting, uh, we do actually have some training around podcasting, but I think the one of the best tests as a podcaster is thinking about all the different collaboration skills. And I bring that up because the conversation we wanted to have today with generative AI is about all of the collaboration, all of the so-called soft skills that are involved in using this. Because I think one of the misconceptions that I am hearing again and again is that folks like Jeff and I who are running trainings and workshops around ChatGPT, that there's a suggestion that we're saying this technology is better than the teacher. And, uh, you know, if Jeff and I would never say something like that. I think what we're trying to propose is think about the ways that this technology is going to save you some time and energy so that you can be doing that art of connection that we know is at the heart of our teaching work, but also taking the time to look at when you are really using a tool like chat GPT in a hyper effective way, there's a whole range of skills that are involved. Being a great communicator is one. I think even, you know, having the listening skill set of seeing what is chat GPT misunderstanding about your prompt is another. Yeah. Uh, and then noticing like, what is your approach to problem solving? And how does a resource like chat GPT help you as a problem solver? Um, because you know one of the, one of the stats that uh, has been really interesting to me, I'll link to this over in the, there in the show notes. This comes to us from a future of work report, AI at work. This is put together by LinkedIn, where they say that ninety two percent of U.S. executives agree that people skills are more important than ever even right now in this era of generative AI. So Jeff and I are really interested in this notion of how is this actually a really great moment for us to also be reflecting on what it means to be a teacher, how significant that teacher-student relationship is, and how these tools are going to be giving us that time back. Jeff, I know you've got so many stories about that. So um, <laughs> I'm I'm just going to sit back yeah. and, and let you tell one of them. Well, you know, I think the thing is, is, you know, this is, I'm on uh, whatever we are in here last week of August. Uh, so I've already done, I don't know how many different school districts since the beginning. I got started on August 2nd. I happened to be home this weekend, uh, which is the first weekend in a while that I've been home, uh, not out traveling. I think last week alone, I put 900 miles on the car uh, driving around the state of Washington. So, but one of the things I do love about doing this work is the stories that you get to hear. And, and you're absolutely right, Trisha. I think one of the things you have to remember is we're, Everything that I'm hearing is like, well, kids won't have to write anymore, except every single AI, you have to write the prompt. <laughs> I, if, if you want it to create an image for you, you write the prompt. If you want it to create text for you, you write the prompt. Writing's not going anywhere. Writing is changing. And, and how much writing we do and, and what that writing is and the format of that writing is changing. But it has been for a long time. It has been for a long time, and, and that is part of it. I think the other part is, and this is the, what we've been doing in the trainings, is folks, teachers, you, we need to be using this for your own health. We know that you don't have the resources. We know you work 60-hour weeks at home grading papers. Why don't you offload some of that to your, to your AI? If, we, if I can save you, and this is what I do in my trainings, if I can save you three to five hours a week, why wouldn't you? What would you do with an extra to three to five hours a week doing the stuff you already have to do? Doing the stuff you already have to do, you get to do it quicker and most of the time faster than you were going to do it anyways. You already have to do the work. Do it faster. Do it quicker. What would you do with three to five extra hours if I could give that back to you? Self-health? Would you, would you be able to maybe you know go to that yoga class or go for a run and take care of yourself? 
Would you spend more time with in front of your students and get you out from behind the computer? That's what we want. Understanding that what these AI bots do, all of them, is they get you about 80% of the way there. If you give it a good prompt, if you get it a good prompt, it gets you about 80% of the way there. Our job then as teachers is the last 20%. And folks, this is what I want for you. I want you to focus on the last 20% because that's why you got hired in the first place. You did not get hired to put everything into UDL format. And if you had somebody that could take any lesson that you've been teaching for years, copy and paste it and say, put this into UDL format for me, wouldn't you do it? Now, is it a great UDL lesson plan? No, but it's a good UDL lesson plan. And then you do the last 20%. And Trisha, to your point, this is what I want. This is my goal. And I say this in every training that I'm going to. Here's my goal. My goal is how do we use our time more effectively around PLCs and team meetings? Here's what I'd love to see. Trisha, I'm going to pretend for a second that you and I are two ELA teachers. We're getting ready to do... Oh, sorry, Trisha. I wasn't an EL teacher. What is, uh, what's a concept that we're going to be uh, teaching here uh, as we start the school year? We're going to be looking at theme. Okay. We're looking at theme and writing. We're looking at theme. We're going to be reading books. We're going to be talking about theme. And I need to engage some kids around this idea of theme. And my school is telling me that I need to be creating lessons that are in a UDL framework, right? Universal design for learning, which here in the state of, uh, of Washington, we're all in, but I know we are in a lot of places around the world too, but it doesn't have to be UDL. Maybe you're project-based, maybe you're inquiry-based, maybe you're an IB, MYP program. It doesn't matter. It knows all of it, but here's what I want, right? It, it, it'll get you halfway there. It'll get you 80% of the way there. So this is what I want. I want Trisha and I to come to our PLC meeting and Trisha and I are going to sit down in our PLC meeting and we're going to take the lesson that we did last year around theme where both, both of us are going to copy and paste it into ChatGPT and say, could you rewrite this using the universal design for learning framework or project-based learning or whatever you want. Now, because it's generative, we get two different things, which is what I want. And it did 80% of the work, which means the rest of our PLC, and it did it in 10 seconds. You're welcome. We get to spend the rest of our PLC time or the rest of our team planning time focused on the 20%, folks. Trisha and I can sit there and say, ooh, I really like the way it did this, or this would work for this kid. That wouldn't work for this kid. Or that works for me because of the way you run your classroom. Or this might not work for me because of the way I run my classroom. It doesn't know you. It doesn't know your kids. That's the 20%. That's the 20%. And yes, you have for years been communicating and bouncing ideas off of your colleagues. And you're going to continue to do that. But now you're going to do it with a thought partner on the side that is going to support you to get outside of your two heads and bring in some new fresh ideas that maybe you just don't even know existed. Or maybe you need an extension activity. You can go to ChatGPT and say, give me an extension activity for this lesson. Or maybe, and this is where I've actually had teachers crying in my sessions. I have a student who is on an IEP who has this intervention, copy, paste the intervention in, and it will give you suggestions on how to support that kid. Trisha, when we talk about communication, when we talk about using this stuff, it's, it's about allowing it to do the heavy lifting, the 80%. And then you and I talking, my colleagues and I sitting down, looking at what it gave because we all got something different laughing at the stuff that it got completely wrong because it does sometimes, especially assessments are horrible. Usually it gives you horrible assessments. So don't ever trust assessment by ChatGPT. Get your own or ask it to go further. Ask it for a project-based assessment. Ask it for an assessment that fo- pushes farther than give kids a test, right? But I want the communication to be, we have a starting spot. How do we up the game for our kids? How do we focus our energy and time on the 20% because something else can do the 80% for us? It's like having a personal assistant. If every teacher had a personal assistant that they could go to and say, "Uh, Trisha, could you just take that lesson plan from last year and put that into UDL format for me? Thanks. Trisha would come back and I would still look over it and be like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I'll change this and I'll change this because I know Tommy's like this and Sally does this and da, 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 da. You're still going to change it. This is no different, right? And it's still having the conversation with each other. I want our AIs to force us to have more conversations with our colleagues at a higher level, at a higher level that we never got to because last time Trish and I got together, this, the, you know, our team meeting went like this. Oh, we got to do theme again, Trisha. 
Let's look at what did we do last year? Do you remember what we did last year? Oh, let's go grab that. Oh yeah. Do you remember? Oh yeah. This was good. I remember this part. This was good. And that part was good. And this part, my kids didn't like, and, and then half the meeting's gone and you haven't actually done the 20% yet. Cause you're just trying to figure out where you're going to start. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Trisha, on that one? Well, I, I think again, the, the saving of time and energy and the modeling of that for our students is also really important. So I would say even being really transparent and saying to my class, this is how we engage generative AI. So the concept of theme, I would even be saying chat GPT for the following 10 careers that I know my students are interested in. Can you come up with a three sentence um, argument for why somebody who is interested in becoming a social media marketer? Why do they yes. need to understand it? Yes. For somebody that wants to become a project. Why manager, do they need to understand theme? Yes. I'm going to bring all of yes. those arguments to my class and say, what do you think? What's it getting right? What, you know, to your point, yeah. it does get things wrong. And we need to have that conversation with yeah. this is not uh, a genius, right? Um, it, it is not a, a yeah. the silver bullet. So having those conversations with students about what's it assuming, what's it getting wrong, because I would even say, make that argument understandable for a 16-year-old. And then I'm going to ask my students, like, yeah. the language that it's using here, do you feel like, what, what's it assuming about your age, about your grade? right? Like having that two-way conversation is, is super important. Um, one of our free guides that's been really popular in the past year is using ChatGPT for Earth Day. We'll leave the link in the show notes. You can also just get to it by heading over to shiftingschools.com. But I have always loved bringing ethical dilemmas to my students. Jeff, in years past, like coming up with an ethical dilemma, that takes a lot of time and energy. Yeah. I used ChatGPT yeah. to give me a bunch of them. I gave it key concepts that I wanted it to explore. And I asked it, you know, again, for specific grade levels, specific subjects, bringing that then to your students and saying, what's it, uh, what's its understanding of the concept? What's its understanding yeah. of your ability to grapple with an ethical dilemma? is actually, quote unquote, age appropriate. What What isn't? Um, and then saying, how can we, what's our next best question for ChatGPT to make this better? Um, I, I think that modeling yeah. that back and forth is going to be really important. You know, I think a lot about what we got wrong when social media first came on the stage and we weren't having conversations with our students and then we had so many people yeah. who I think didn't understand necessarily like the impact social media was about to have on society, how we can be critical consumers of what's on social media. And I really don't want us to make that mistake again in this new era of generative AI. I agree with you. And it's something that I mentioned to teachers all the time, that exact, that exact example where I was like, you know, there were some of us when social media came out me being one of them that were standing here going like, Hey, uh, uh, hi, uh, Hey people, you're going to want to pay attention to this. You're going to want to pay attention. And schools didn't. And then cyber bullying is out of control, right? Steroid use am among teenage boys is out of control. Eating disorders for, for, uh, our female population in schools is, is, is an issue. And because we ignored it. And then by the time we were like, Oh, this social media, th it was too late. Like we've got generations now that are, that are, I don't want the same thing to happen. <laughs> you know, I don't want kids to think that they can just ask this to do their essay, copy and paste it and turn in their essay because nobody taught them that it only gets you 50 to 60% of the way there. You still have to do the rest, right? You still have to do your rest. And I love that uh, analogy that you brought up or that story you brought up because I say the same thing. I, you know, I put myself back in high school. In high school, I didn't like paying attention in class. I was a baseball player, right? I was going to be in the MLB one day. Speaking of which, my Mariners start here in just a second. First place in the AL West as we start today, by the way. But I was going to be a baseball player. Why do I care what about math? Why do I care about the quadratic equation? I'm going to be a baseball player. And you've got kids who believe that they're going to be whatever they happen to be. And I was a baseball player. But what I love is I go to ChatGPT now and I can say, how do you use the quadratic equation in baseball? Mm-hmm. And then it just gives me these things like, well, here's some ways you can use it in baseball. You know, like the launch trajectory of the ball. And I'm like, oh, so you mean every time somebody hits a home run and they instantly show the flight path, that's the quadratic equation. 
uh, measure the speed of a pitch is a quadratic equation. <laughs> you start looking at this, you're like, it's all math. It's all math. And I'm thinking if I, if, if, if a teacher would have been able to come to me and say, Jeff, I know you don't get this math stuff, but you want to be a baseball player someday, understand that there is a specific launch angle that you are trying to get to when you hit a ball, if you want to hit a home run. The launch angle has to be between these 10 degrees. If you don't hit the ball between these 10 degrees, it's not going to go over the fence no matter how hard you hit it. That would have gotten me into math. Right? Yeah. And so I think about how do we bring that in? You've got kids. I know you've got kids who just won't engage in name your subject. What if you could go to it and say, how do I help a kid who only thinks they're going to be a major league baseball player when they grow up? understand the importance of X, Y, and Z, right? What a great tool. And folks, you don't have time to do that for every single one of your students. One of the things I love saying to teachers, this is the greatest differentiation tool ever created by mankind, ever. You, you would be, I almost feel like it's malpractice if you don't use it. I honestly do. Because this differentiates your classroom on the fly. You didn't have time to take this piece of reading that I need every kid to engage with, right? I've got a reading that every kid's got to grade you. The problem is I'm a fifth grade teacher. I've got kids reading at a third grade reading level, fifth grade reading level, and the seventh grade reading level. How do I make sure that all of my kids can access what I need them to access? Well, you copy and paste it into ChatGPT and say, can you rewrite this using third grade language? Can you rewrite this using fifth grade language? Can you rewrite this using seventh grade language? And the crazy part is not only does it do it, Trisha, it does it in less than 30 seconds. Less than 30 seconds. I've differentiated my classroom. I can still have a conversation with my kids knowing that they had the article at a reading level that they can comprehend. Yeah, folks, it's no practice if you don't use it. I think also just, uh, you know, again, I think one of the, the biggest pieces that we work on getting better and better is that communication piece with parents and caregivers. And that takes so much time. It no longer needs to take so much time. So, much time. so I've got my unit plan or I've got my assessment overview. I'm going to copy paste into chat GPT and I'm going to say, give me two paragraphs explaining why this is important how parents and caretakers can support this learning at home. Oh, I have a few parents in my classroom who are Vietnamese speakers. Can you translate that into Vietnamese, please? Now, will it get it 100% yeah. perfect? No, it might not. And I'm going to communicate with parents. I'm using a translation tool here. But I guarantee you they're going to appreciate but that. But nothing I've taken, did. Yeah. Nothing got it perfect. Yeah. <laughs> nothing got it perfect before. And, you know, what I've noticed actually is with chat GPT, you can go a little bit further and say, here is exactly the region of that language. I'd like you to use that style. And I've heard from multiple people like, wow, that really is using slang terminology that is specific to yeah. this region. Um, I might even with my so students. When I've been doing this with teachers. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, no, go ahead. you know, you go for as it. with ELA teaching, I think thinking about, as we were saying, talking about the language of social media, I might also say, here's this unit planner. I want you to write me a 60 second TikTok script advertising. Love it. I might even say a certain celebrity. I'm going to give this to the students and I'm going to say like, did it get the celebrity's voice right? Yeah. What is inaccurate? what is accurate. Um, and again, I think it gives me a really quick way to switch text types and review those with students as well. Because, you know, I know that a lot of folks are saying, I'm going to give all of the unit objectives to the students. Eyes are glazing over, folks are bored. What are some of the ways that I can use chat GPT <laughs> to get students excited about the start of a new unit? Yeah. I've got the, again, an amazing rough draft tool here to play around with. Um, and I'm going to be super yeah. transparent with my students and say, this is how I did that. This is the exact prompt that I used. You ask it to create a 60 second TikTok video campaign. You give it more specifics and let's compare all the different results. All of a sudden, my students know way more about this upcoming unit than they ever would have before. Yeah. Or I even, so there's so many things unpacking there. And 
I even love like this idea. You just made me think about this one. We're getting ready to read the great Gatsby, right? In class. And you're trying to get kids right into getting ready to read this book or whatever book. It doesn't matter what the book is. It knows all the books that we read in schools. But what if you had your kids go over and say, ask it to give a summary of name your book in the tone of, I don't know, Ted Lasso. And the kids could pick whoever they wanted to pick. How fun would it be for them to get an overview before you read the book? They're going to get an overview of the book in a tone that is fun for them, right? I could have it in Snoop Dogg. You could have it in Ted Lasso. You could have it in name a character. It could be an Iron Man for all I care. But every kid could do it for their for their own so that they there's, a, there's this buy-in. I just differentiated my classroom or the kids did it by allowing kids to re- read a summary of it. And then to your point, Trisha, we go back to these soft skills, one of them being this idea of communication. Now, I want to talk about this because here's already things that we're seeing out in the real world. We are seeing, as I've been working with people across different industries, specifically in HR, a lot of, I've been working with some HR companies or companies in the HR department. The number one thing that has happened since ChatGB came out is there's no more cover letter. we're, We're completely doing away with the cover letter when you apply for a job. And the reason is, is when anybody can grab the job opening, and you should try this, go find a job opening on the internet, copy and paste it in ChatGPT and say, based on this job posting, write me the best cover letter ever. And that is what happens. So you can't trust the cover letter anymore. So what companies are doing now is they're going directly to a Zoom interview. So the new skill that students need to have is a skill we were already struggling to have with this generation is them talking to each other. The communication of human to human, we were already struggling with with a generation. That's a whole nother talk. Why? But that is becoming more and more important of a skill. So if I go back to this idea where every kid is getting, because it's generative, every kid gets something different. How does that spark? How does that spark collaboration in my classroom? Hey, we're working on Earth Day. Everybody put this in. Now, with your elbow partner, what did you get? What did they get? What do you agree with? What do you not agree with? How, what did it give you? What did it give me? And we can, we, it will instantly set up, right? These, these, because everybody gets something different. You set up collaboration. You set up conversation. You allow kids to do the last 20% when it can do 80%. You get to focus on critical thinking, higher level order thinking, with students working on collaboration, communication, listening, close reading strategies. Yeah. Folks, please, please, for your kid's sake, <laughs> figure out a way to, to leverage this. So we are doing the stuff we know we need kids to do. Yeah. People skills, as we started this episode off with, they're not going away. They're becoming more important. And I do think... The more we're talking to people who are going a little bit deeper into experimenting with it, you know, again, our our three-month generative AI cohort, one of the resources is um, a whole sequence on mega prompting. And I think the feedback around that and realizing, wow, actually your quality of writing in order to do a really sophisticated mega prompt, this is higher level thinking. So those skills, you know, again, as we started off with that stat, more important, not less. And I think that's the message our students need to hear as well, as well as parents and caretakers too. And I will tell everybody right now, the three month cohort is worth that resource. (laughs) Trisha, the resource that you made around supporting kids and making mega prompts, because that is something we can assess. We're not talking, copying and pasting some prompt that a teacher gave us to write an essay. I mean, when you see some of the stuff that Trisha supports you in creating with mega prompts, that's an assessment where these kids are literally writing a couple of paragraphs in some cases in order to get the output that you need them to get. You can assess that. You can assess that. That resource alone, Trisha, man, that is legit. <laughs> that is such a good resource. I use it all the time in the trainings that I do. I apologize. I stole it from you. No, no, no. Um, I don't give it away though, because it's not worth giving it away. But I mean, we got to make some money at some point, but, uh, but I use it as just this idea around mega prompts, right? It's, it, it takes me back to my Google days. There's a difference between doing research on Google and looking stuff up. 
There's a difference of asking your AI to do something and giving it a mega prompt that will blow your mind <laughs> on the out on the output, right? That is it, it, oh, such a great resource. And then you've got all kinds of frameworks. One of the things, I mean, okay, anybody that's listening to this already knows that Trisha loves her frameworks. I don't know how many frameworks you make, Trisha. Do your mind just like work in frameworks? Well, you know, because even like I will say something for you over in our Slack channel and you'll be like, oh, there's a framework. Yep. Here's a framework. And you just like, I don't know, your brain thinks in frameworks or something. Well, I think what it is, Jeff, is yes, these are turbulent times, right? Like a lot of disruption. And I think frameworks offer a little bit of stability, right? I, I, and I, I find myself almost craving whenever things are kind of messy and chaotic. What is some scaffolding that we can put together that gives me a little bit of process? That's not like prescriptive. It's not like do this, do this, sure. do this, do this. But it is some guidance for how we can, back to your point, be having conversations around this and coming back to this is a great tool for curiosity, for conversation, for community, um, and also for questioning. You know, we've said multiple times in this episode alone, the output that you get is not perfect. We are never suggesting this is a tool that replaces us. However, we are suggesting there's going right. to be a skill to partnering with this as your virtual assistant, your thought partner, whatever you want to call it. It's like a, a collaborative position for us to take and to practice. And I think the resources that are inside that three-month cohort are really meant to help just facilitate what is this mindset? How do I rehearse this mindset? And how do I model it for students who we know are going to need it in future industries and future career pathways? Yeah. And like all technology, you know, like all technology, it creates new opportunities. So Trisha, I don't know if you saw this headline the other day. I'll put, I'll uh, grab it and give it to you for the show notes. But I was reading this headline because the headline, of course, grabbed me. It said, um, this freelance in-demand job is now making $250 an hour. Work from home, right? Work at your own pace. Work from home, $250 an hour. No degree needed. Do you know what, do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. Creative writer. Mm. Creative writer. To be a freelance creative writer is $250. You see, before ChatGPT, before AI, creative writers were making around $100 an hour. But because everybody is using ChatGPT or whatever AI to create content, the problem is, is the content's just okay. It's not great. And so now, if you're not a creative person to know how to take it from the 80% to the 100%, you're going to hire somebody. That job is in more demand. You don't need a degree. You can work from home as a freelance, freelance creative writer making 250 bucks an hour. Trisha. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. So what, like I, I want, I want English teachers to know this. I want English teachers to say, this is how important writing is. It's not that writing is less important. Writing is now more important because if everything sounds like it was created by an AI, what is going to make you stand out is the uniqueness that you bring to the output. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason why we're having strikes down in LA right now, a writer strike. Everybody's trying to figure out what is it that I, you know, where do I fit as a playwright, as a writer of TV shows, where do I fit in the world of AI? And here's the problem. I don't think we're seeing the mindset. The mindset is it can't replace your job. It won't replace your job, but it allows you to focus on the 20%, right? Like I just used Spielberg. Like, I don't need Spielberg to do the 80%. What makes him unique and special is the 20%. <laughs> what if he can just focus on the 20%? How much better of movies are we going to get when all of your energy is focused on the 20%, not the 80%? That's where the learning is, folks. That's where That's our job. That's where we want kids to be. How do we offload that stuff so we can get there? And know that we are here to support you. We are here to support you in that. We've got leadership in the AI over in our new uh, camp at camp.shiftingschools.com. We now have our cohort, our three-month cohort, where we support you for three months. You have access to Trisha and I. You get all of these resources. So we are not going to leave you hanging. <laughs> you know, we will support you through this. That's that's our job. That's what we love to do. That's what fills our bucket. 
is supporting others and still being teachers. We're just teachers of teachers now. But we've got to figure out where this goes and, and how do we focus on that 20%. And if you ever find yourself in class going like, oh my gosh, this is taking so much time. It's probably because you're not focused on the 20%. That's not the stuff that fills the teacher's bucket. Right? Writing recommendations letters. I don't know any teachers. It's just like, I can't wait for recommendation letter time. I just love writing recommend. I know you love writing recommendation letters for your, for your students, but they take a lot of time. And here's the problem. Most, most teachers were already cheating when it came to writing recommendation letters because you took last year's recommendation letter and you said, oh, this kid was kind of like that kid. You make a copy of it and then you change about 20%. But instead of doing that, what if you asked AI to create a recommendation letter and then you had to change 20%? You're still changing 20%. And folks, here's the problem. That recommendation letter is actually better. I have two stories from teachers who said they used it last year to write recommendation letters for their students. I had one teacher who told me that the kid came back and was so thankful. So it was the best letter he got of all of his teachers. I had another teacher come back and tell me that the kid came in and actually started crying as he was saying, thank you, because he did not know that he, did, he didn't realize how much this meant to him, what his teacher wrote. And the teacher goes, I felt guilty because I felt like I should tell him that I did A. I was like, don't, no, you still did 20%. Was there anything in that letter that you feel like shouldn't have been in that letter? Because if there was, you would have changed it. It just wrote it better than you would have written it to a point where the kid came in to hug you. You talk about an SEL connection. Folks, make life easier on yourself. Go learn to do some prompt engineering and know that we are here to support you. We've got all kinds of free resources over there. Seven ways. Uh, what's the free resource? Seven ways to use ChatGPT. We've got three ways conversations to, save, to have in your to save school. Save time and energy. That's what we've been what we've been talking about. Um, and that you're you're right. One of the videos inside that free guide is all about. Uh, writing recommendation letters with ChatGPT. Again, there's a little bit of an art and craft to it because you don't just go to ChatGPT yeah. and say, give me a letter of recommendation. There's more to it than that. <laughs> That's right. The video goes through it. But that yeah. of um, of the seven videos is the one that has had the most views. So check that out. We'll leave the yeah. link to that free guide over there in the show notes. And Jeff, we should probably say, you know, we, we've had a, a few folks reach out for bespoke personal trainings. You don't want to join one of the larger cohorts. We get it. Sometimes you need something more specific. We do need a little bit of lead time. Jeff and I are booked up September and October. We're currently open for some November, December trainings. The further notice you can give us, the better. So we're trying to give you a little bit of lead time there as well. So if you need something that's really highly personal or you want something for your parent caretaker audience, I see them being left out of the conversation to our peril, yeah. I think. They need this training as well. They need to know what it's going to mean for their students to be learning with it and learning alongside of it. Yeah. Well, and I've done two parent trainings. I've done two parent trainings around AI, and I find it so fascinating that going into the trainings, teachers and usually the admin of the school were worried that the teach that the parents were going to come back and say, "Why are you letting my kid using this? My kid's not going to learn anything with this." You know what I found is the exact opposite. Is <laughs> when I get done with a parent training, I have had so many parents that come up to me and say, "I am so glad my child has access to you to use this. You have no idea what this is going to do for my child." This is such an exciting thing to have for my kid to have access to the res what we believe is going to be the response and what the response has been are completely opposite. But if you don't know, and we're not supporting that parent community, then that's, we don't know, right? We don't know. And we do need to support them. So do please reach out. Uh, like Trisha said, we can, we can come in person. If you would like us to come in person, that's the work that I am doing all of August, but we also have school districts who we are creating virtual sessions for. Uh, we can run these virtual for you. We allow you to record it, keep that virtual session so you can keep it with inside your district as well. Uh, so we are here to support you any way you can. You can find all of that in our contact details over at shiftingschools.com. And remember that if you, before September 20th, if you join our new little social network, camp.shiftingschools.com, if you come to camp with us, camp.shiftingschools.com, you get the leadership in the era of AI completely free. That's a $95 value, completely free if you join us over at camp 
www.shiftingschools.com before September 20th. We're just going to unlock that for you. Uh, and we'd love for you to take it, go with it, use it, give us some feedback on it uh, so we can make it even better in the future as well. But uh, that's before September 20th. If you join on September 21st, you're going to have to pay $95. So get over there, camp.shiftingschools.com and uh, make sure that you uh, sign up for our little social network where we are hanging out around the campfire. Got a whole camp theme going on over there. Hopefully that helps people out. Um, we're looking forward to a lot of camping puns in in the network. So uh, it's our little our little thing. We've gotten a whole nother uh, off the cuff. The last off the cuff episode was on that. So we won't go into that here. Trisha, any last words uh, as we continue our conversations and you and I continue our world into AI? What's been like, what for you, I'll just ask you this final question. What for you has been, even in the work that you do, like you do a lot of work around uh, equity inclusion, you know, supporting our LGBTQ plus communities. You do a lot of stuff around technology. You do a lot of stuff around um, uh, gay straight alliance uh, uh, clubs in our schools, plus all of the stuff that you do for shifting schools. Thank you so much for all that, by the way. You do all that as well. What ha what has what have been some of your like almost like mind blowing moments that you've had with ChatGPT and AI so far? I think, to be honest with you, this sounds simple, but I think it's really profound. I think we are in a moment where, again, generative AI tools are going to be increasingly more important, showing up in a variety of ways. I think chatbots are going to become more sophisticated, and. I find there's this amazing thing that happens where people are, I'm so afraid of this. I'm so afraid of what this means. And I think you only understand what it means if actually you're getting in there, you're playing around with the tool, you're seeing where the limitations are as well as the strengths and opportunities. And I actually think a lot of the equity issues, a lot of the ethical issues, you can only have those, those real deep conversations if you tinker and try this out. Um, and I have found, you know, mm. a lot of people have said, oh, I've heard this, I've heard that. You need to try it out. You know, I, I do think we do need to be concerned about the very sophisticated mis and disinformation that can be created because of a tool like this. Yeah. Now I could tell you that and maybe yeah, you'll absolutely. think like, oh yeah, so it's a problem I've heard about. That. When you use it, then you actually really you'll understand, oh, Yep. Now I get why that's an issue. So I, mm. I think, again, schools who aren't creating that space and place for the experimentation, you're going to miss out on that deep level of understanding. And I know, Jeff, you've experienced that as well. Like, we need to experiment, we need to tinker, and we need to talk openly about what yeah. we're finding. Yeah, I agree. And I think we just, as an education, and one of the things I love, and I love that we're having these conversations now. And I've been talking about this every time I do a presentation at every district I'm at. The thing that I love the most is we're having the conversations. You know, when I get brought into a school district or a school district, we're online with the school district folks, we're having the conversations to Trisha's earlier point. This isn't the year of social media. We learned our lesson. We cannot wait 10 years later and then try to go back and wait for somebody like common sense media to actually make something yeah. to wrap our heads around. We can't do that. We can't wait for states and the government to say, oh, by the way, you have to be teaching social media because it's become such a huge problem. We have to be on top of it. And one of the things I love in my 20 plus years of supporting schools in educational technology, this is the first time in my career that we are trying to figure out something in K-12 at the same time that universities are trying to figure out because they don't have answers. And corporate America is trying to figure this out because they don't have all the answers. Folks, we're in the conversation. And to be in the conversation means to have conversations. You're not going to get it right. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. This thing is crazily cool and also crazily frightening. And we're all trying to figure it out, but we need to be in the conversation. We can't sit back and say, well, let's wait and see if corporate America actually, you know, decides that the ballpoint pen is worth going to, and then we'll teach kids how to write in pen. We can't sit back and do that. Right? We, we have to be able to say, hey, look, we are in this with you. What is happening at universities? What is happening in corporate America? And how is that then filtering back? Because we're supporting kids. It's not going away. It's only going to become deeper ingrained into the tools that we're already using in some really cool ways. For example, I told I sent this to Tricia the other day. I've got a new AI in my Spotify. That dude's pretty cool. The music he's jamming for me. 
I'm jamming with him. I can change it. I can give him more feedback. I'm talking to my Spotify now to tell it, I want this kind of music right now. And then I change it to that kind of music because my mood changed or I'm working on a different project. Folks, this is cool. Crazy, scary, but also kind of cool, right? And you only know where those edges are if you're actually playing with it. We're here to support you. We are here to help you and your students understand how to use it. Where are those edges? How do you create policy? What does it look like to reimagine assessments? It's all here for us over here at Shifting Schools. Again, join us over at camp.shiftingschools.com. Get that free access to leadership in an era of AI. You can also check out our three-month cohort. Uh, that's over on our website. If you want to do that, you can sign up for that as well. We're going to be kicking off another cohort year as our first two cohorts filled up. Uh, and as long as they keep filling up, we will keep running cohorts. We want to support you uh, in the work that we do. We are going to be having more here on the podcast as well. And of course, Trisha will be pumping out the newsletters every week for you. If you're not subscribed to the newsletter, you can go over, download that free guide, seven ways to use chat GPT in your own work. You're going to get that video that Trisha created that shows you how to write recommendation letters. And when you download any one of our free sources, just say that you want to us to give you more emails. And Trisha is pumping out email every week, different resources, a ton of it focused on AI. We'll be right in your inbox when you are ready and when you need us. Folks, thanks for hanging around. Thank you for this off the cuff episode. Trisha, it's always great to be able to just click the record button and, and chat with you. I mean, I know we chat sometimes without the record button, but it's just different when we're on it. So thanks for being here. Yeah.